Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Trent. In today's video, we are covering the SaaS metrics that matter. The reason this information is important is because if you work in software like me, you need to understand how does your work contribute to the whole and what does good look like? This will actually give you an edge to find more success sooner rather than later. As you can see, I started my career as an SDR. I'll show this to you right now briefly. Worked my way up to a senior account executive, been at the same company for four years. And my goal is actually to become an enterprise account executive. I think it's one of the most lucrative career paths. I plan to spend my entire career in SaaS, so I'm always researching to get that edge. And one of the best people to follow is David Sachs. I'll put a link to his newsletter below. He's a billionaire. He's one of the hosts on the All In podcast that I listen to frequently. He's a venture capitalist. He started companies. And he shares this information to advise people that have startups that are looking to start companies or even people in corporations like me that need to be cognizant of what is going on and how can we actually increase these stock prices to make more money and really build the life we want. So keep in mind, no original thought from me in today's video. I'm not telling you what's important. We are going based on what David has said is important to someone that's reputable in the space. So I'm basically just gonna read it and provide my commentary and that will be the video. I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like right now because it really helps. And I want as many people that are passionate about software like me to get this information because I think it's really helpful. And I've read it like four times and I still don't entirely understand it. Uh, so we're gonna do our best here today. One of the best features of SaaS businesses is how easy they are to measure. Only a handful of metrics really matter. This post breaks down those key performance indicators, KPIs, and provides the benchmarks that we at Kraft, that's his venture capital firm, like to see at the Series A stage in order to lead to a new investment. <clears throat> this is his most popular article, by the way, um, so it's got a lot of good stuff in it. So number one is growth. The starting point for understanding a SaaS business is revenue growth, the best proof of product market fit. MRR or ARR, annual recurring revenue, is the standard for SaaS companies that sell annual subscription contracts or monthly recurring revenue MRR for those selling monthly subscriptions. If your company sells both, choose the metric that represents the majority of revenue. ARR is always 12 times MRR. Note the requirement that the contract is recurring, ongoing, one-time revenue, such as for professional services or pilots, does not count towards MRR or ARR. For startups seeking Series A funding round, the old benchmark used to be 1 million in ARR, but recently the threshold has been around 500k RRR as rounds get preempted and happen earlier. If you plan to start a software company like I do, the benchmark, if you get to 500k in annual recurring revenue, then you could get money to hire people and to continue to grow. I sold basically a million dollars in ARR last year, given I'm working for a company with a lot of resources, but th this is just a point of validation of, it's not as unattainable as it may seem. You just gotta figure out how do you grow, and that's what we're gonna cover now. <clears throat> CMGR, what's the best way to measure growth in MRR? Simply looking at month over month growth rates is likely to be very lumpy. To normalize for this, use a CAGR calculator, but on a monthly basis. This is called Compound Monthly Growth Rate, CMGR. For example, if you begin the year at 100K ARR and end it at 1 million ARR, you would enter those starting and ending values for 12 periods for a CMGR of 21%, an outstanding result. For startups seeking Series A or B funding, we like to see a CMGR of at least 15% below 1 million ARR and 10% above 1 million ARR. A CMGR of 10% is about 3x year-over-year -year growth. So guys, I read that and I can't entirely process it, so I'm gonna have to read it multiple times over, but hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, and this is where it starts to become a lot more digestible going forward. MRR components. Breaking down MRR, monthly recurring revenue, into its key components helps to understand changes in MRR over time. For any given period, we want to understand the contribution of the following. Retained, MRR retained from existing customers. Expansion, MRR added from existing customers. New sales, MRR added from new customers. Restructured, 
MRR added from former customers, contraction, MRR lost from customer downgrades, and churn, MRR lost from churn customers. <coughs> Got a little bit of a cough here, guys. So I'm doing my best to read this uh, as, as eloquently as I can. Customer concentration. Is growth being driven by a few big contracts or many small ones? It's a potential red flag if too much revenue is concentrated in too few large accounts. If one or two customers make up the majority of revenue, that's a significant risk to the business that needs to be vetted. On the other hand, if the largest customer is less than 10% of revenue, that indicates low customer concentration. We just covered growth there, guys, and there's five more key SaaS metrics that you need to know. Number two, retention. Retention is analyzed by grouping customers into cohorts according to their sign-up period, month, quarter, or year, then tracking what percentage of the original cohort remains over time. Understanding retention rates of monthly cohorts, typically at months 12 and 24, is vital to the health of the business as a fast growth rate in new sign-ups can mask high churn rates in older, smaller cohorts. Only when growth slows down will this leaky bucket become obvious. There are two main ways to analyze retention. Dollar retention, also known as net revenue retention, NRR. Dollar retention measures how much revenue a cohort is generating in each period relative to its original size. Dollar retention takes expansion revenue into account and can be greater than 100% if expansion exceeds churned and contracted revenue. As you guys can see, it starts to build on each other, these, these different terms. The best SaaS companies have 120% dollar retention each year. Dollar retention of less than 100% per year is evident of a leaky bucket and is problematic. Logo retention. Logo retention measures the percent of customers that stay active, non-churned. Logo retention can never be higher than 100% since the number of logos can expand. As a result, logo retention is usually much lower than dollar retention. Logo retention is typically a function of customer size. 90-95% is common for enterprises, 85% for mid-market, and 70-80% to for small businesses. Logo retention below these benchmarks could be evidence of a problem. That said, dollar retention is much more important than logo retention. Number three, sales efficiency, unit economics. Keep in mind, guys, there's six total here, so bear with me until the end because each of them is really important. It's important to analyze sales efficiency to ensure that growth is efficient and sustainable. Fake growth can always be achieved through uneconomic levels of spending. Several related metrics to help to understand sales efficiency by comparing the value of new customers to the cost of acquiring them. New sales, ARR, versus SMM, expense. How much did the sales and marketing S&M departments, inclusive of all programs and personnel, spend compared to how much new sales ARR, ARR from new customers only, was added in the same period? Ideally, new sales ARR is equal or greater than SMM spending. So basically what that means, guys, <clears throat> if you spend a million dollars on sales and marketing, then ideally that equals $1 million in ARR, and that's really efficient customer acquisition. CAC, customer acquisition cost, divides the SMM expense in the preceding period, month or quarter, by the number of new customers in the current period. The lag is intended to reflect the time it takes for SMM investment to materialize in new sales. Longer or shorter lag may be appropriate depending on the length of the sales cycle. New ACV versus CAC, it's useful to compare annual contract value of new customers to their CAC. Ideally, ACV is greater than CAC, meaning that customer acquisition does not cost more than first year's revenue. CAC payback. To determine how many months it takes for a customer to produce enough gross profit to pay back its CAC, divide SMM spend by MRR times gross margin. Lower margin products with high CAC do poorly on payback. Magic number. Magic number is the net new ARR in a period divided by SMM expense from the prior period. Ideally, the ratio is greater than one. Guys, this is helpful because you take this and you reverse engineer it. You say, this is exactly what we need to do to make a successful business. <clears throat> number four, margins. 
Gross margins. Gross margin reflects a company's margin after subtracting the cost of goods sold, COGS, from revenue. You and I as reps are COGS. For SaaS companies, COGS typically consist of hosting costs, any data or software needed for the product to operate, and the cost of frontline operations, salespeople. There can be good reasons for lower gross margins early in a company's life cycle, but in the long term, SaaS companies should have a gross margin of at least 75%. Persistently low gross margins can be evidence of a mechanical Turk problem, whereby the company is using humans to perform the product capabilities, i.e. it's not a pure software company. So guys, margin is basically why companies are getting crushed, particularly in tech today, because companies that don't have high profit margins right now, that basically they are not necessarily profitable because they're trying to grow, they're getting crushed in the market. And that's why the companies with the best margins right now are those software companies that are performing better. LTV, lifetime value, is a cumulative gross profit contribution, net of CAC, of the average customer in a cohort. Therefore, LTV incorporates CAC, dollar retention, and gross margin to show overall company health. If dollar retention is greater than 100% LTV, can increasingly identif identif indefinitely, having a tough time reading. However, if customers churn, LTV will flatten out and stop increasing. Healthy cohorts cross the $0 LTV lines before month 12 and LTV grows to at least 3x original CAC over time. Number five, and we're speeding up on the final metrics here, guys. Capital efficiency, burn multiple. The burn multiple is a company's net burn divided by its net new ARR in a given period, typically annually or quarterly. This formula evaluates burn as a multiple of ARR growth. In other words, how much is a startup burning in order to generate each incremental dollar of ARR? The higher the burn multiple, the more the startup is burning to achieve each unit of growth. The lower the burn multiple, the more efficient the growth is. For fast-growing SaaS companies, a burn multiple of at least one, of less than one is amazing. But anything less than two is still quite good. If a startup has a high burn multiple but low CAC, that could indicate that s and costs have been miscategorized. Hype ratio. Another popular way to measure capital efficiency is the hype ratio, which equals capital raised or burned divided by ARR. But we prefer burn multiple because it focuses on recent performance. Finally, number six, engagement. Traditionally, a consumer metric, user engagement has taken on new relevance for SaaS startups, as free trials or freemium users are more likely to convert to paid accounts. When they have high engagement, once paid, highly engaged accounts are also less likely to churn. There are two main measures of engagement, <coughs> DAU, MAU, the ratio of daily active users versus monthly active users. A good metric for most SaaS startups is 40% DAU divided by MAU during non-holiday weekends, meaning that the typically the typical monthly user visits the site at least two weekdays per week or eight times per month. In general, you can see the non-holiday weekend usage by eyeballing the crest of the chart. Gotta have the chart. DAU, WAU, the ratio of daily active users to weekly active users. A good metric for most SaaS startups, a 60% DAU divided by WAU during non-holiday weekends, meaning that the typical user visits the site three out of five weekdays. In both cases, SaaS startups want to remove the noise created by free users. The result metric of paid engagement would also show activity levels for paid seats. Guys, that's what we get right there. Hold on, let me see. Okay, now we got the full screen. I used to go through school where if I got called on to read, I'd have a lot of problems. So I feel like I've come a long way, but some of you may be thinking, Trent, you gotta improve your reading skills. I also have a bit of a scratchy throat here. So I hope you guys found value in today's video. Those are the six SaaS metrics that matter. I'll link his article below. I've read it three, four times now and I'm still trying to process it. But think about what, what is one, two area that you help specifically in your own company and how can you go be better at it this week? Thanks so much for watching guys. If you found value today, leave a like right now on the video, subscribe to the channel for more sales technology videos. And also go watch my podcast. We bring on guests weekly, best practices,